Hey YouTube, welcome to Raindoll 256-bit encryption. Um, this uh, tutorial I'm going to show you will encrypt anything. It doesn't matter <laughs> what kind of file it is. Um, so we're going to get going. We'll, it has decryption too. We're going to go ahead and start a new project. Um, and we're going to choose Visual Basics. And we're going to use windowforms.net under Visual Basics. If you were to click on this little thing, you can go through here and select what you want. And go to Next. You can call this whatever you want. The one that I created is called the ResNOC, the precursor. Um, but we're just going to leave this one as Windows App 2 and uh, get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to need a few things. Um, first things first, we are going to go to View and Solution Explorer. We're going to right-click on solution windows app 2 and we are going to go down to the bottom and we're going to go to configuration properties configuration manager any cpu click new and then just hit ok for 64 bit and what this does is it uses less memory than a 32 bit and you must know that 32 bit and x86 are really no different the only real difference you're going to get is out of a 64-bit. But bear in mind, if you do not have a 64-bit system, you do not want to use 64-bit. You want to use any. Um, you'd want to leave it as it was. So now we need to add something else to the project. We're going to go in and click Add a Module. And we're going to go to Application Manifest File. And what this does is it allows us to go in here and... Uh, when our form loads, we want it to look clear. We don't want it to look all blurry. So we want to go through here and take out these. And this is for Windows support, basically. Um, we're just telling it to go ahead and support all of it because it'll the form will look blurry in itself if we don't go through this process. Um, I've had people ask me how you go about doing this. Make sure that you're getting this one right here. You'll know because it'll have two of these uh, URL uh, links here. And then you just hit uh, save, both of the save ones, and just go ahead and knock that out. And now we are ready to get going. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change, go to properties and change this form background to black just because the white is hard on my eyes. And now that we have this, we're going to go under View and go to Tools. And we are going to add three buttons. And I'm going to just go ahead and hit Control-C and then Control-V and then Control-V again. And what it'll do is it'll just let me copy and paste these buttons. So this first one is going to be a browse button. So we are going to just go ahead and type in browse. <clears throat> this one is going to be encrypt file. If that works with me. And this second one, ah, the third one, excuse me, will be decrypt a file. So now we're going to need a couple of progress bars. And I'm going to go ahead and make these pretty thin. I'm going to take this form and drag it out a little bit more. This is, form isn't going to be as pretty as the one that I've created for the program, but um, it will serve its purpose. Um, you can go ahead and decorate it any way you want after this tutorial. So I'm going to copy and paste this one. So we have two of these. So now we have two progress bars, and I'm going to keep them together like this. And now that I have them both highlighted, I'm going to go here. And as far as the visibility, I'm going to tell it false. 
and I'm going to go in and grab a text box. And I'm going to take this text box. I'm going to go ahead and click this little arrow and tell it multi-line. That way I can drag it out and make it a little bit bigger if I want. I'm going to end up highlighting these right here. If you end up double clicking one of these accidentally and it goes into the form or whatever, say I, I accidentally double click this, you can just go in and delete that. Um, it doesn't work that easy if you're using C Sharp. There are some things you will have to go in. You'll want to delete whatever you did from the form first and then delete your code. Um, for some reason, that's just the way C Sharp is. Um, I like using C Sharp, but it can be a pain in the ass. I can do this project in C Sharp too if you guys want. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm pretty fluent in both languages. So we have that set. I'm just going to kind of pull this over a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a label real quick. And you're going to notice that it's the background's black. So we're going to go ahead and go down to four color. And we're just going to tell this to go to, um, I'm going to go with Dodger blue just because it kind of sticks out. And if you scroll down and you go to text, you can just type in um, file to process. And this can just sit above here. Now that I have all this, I'm going to highlight it all and then I'm going to drag it over here. I guess I'll keep it like this. And... Uh, form we can just kind of tighten up a little bit so now that we have this going um, I have a bunch of code that's right here um, for my stuff the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lay in this code and then you guys can type it out or do whatever you want um, I'm gonna lay out the encryption part first and you don't have to double click on the form um, I have no reason to use a form loading, so you can go to view and go to code, and it'll just pop up this, and in the center here, I'm just going to drop this code in. And you're going to see some of these things pop up red. You want to go here and click the little light bulb and tell this to, under encoding, to import system text. This is going to be system I.O. This is going to be crypt, crypto. And now that we've done that, we don't really have anything red. And this is a whole encryption part. This is complementing the text box. And this is your password. You want to make damn sure that that password matches the decryption password, because if it doesn't, you're not going to have a file left. It will be gone. You will never be able to uh, recover it again. Oops. It's not where I want to be. Check my time real quick. All right. So we're moving along pretty good. I don't, this ain't working so well for me. There we go. Um, so uh, as I get going, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to set this down. As you can see, there's nothing red in here. The only difference that there is from this decryption, from this encryption up top, is this little section right here. You can see this says Create Encryptor. And you can see this says create decryptor. Um, that is an important thing to always know as far as using encryption. And I am going to scream if I open that up again. <laughs> All right, so now we want to go in and go to the en encryption button. Um, if we go to our form and we just go ahead and double click on this button. You can call the button whatever you want, or you don't have to name it at all. Um, but I'm going to go ahead in here and lay in this code. And this is basically telling the progress bar to now make itself visible when um, it is the encryption part is clicked. Um, you can just make little notes in the code. 
you can either use single quotes or you can type in rem, which is bat like uh, the way you would leave notes in bat code um, if you're writing batch files or whatnot. Um, this is complementing progress bar one, so on and so forth. This is going in, and this is what the file name ending is going to be after it encrypts it. Um, now I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go to decrypt and double click on that. And I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to go ahead and dump this code in here. If you guys see, uh, I want to show you something real quick. Um, one thing that I didn't do that I should do. Um, oh, my end tries, not in there. All right, so one thing that I had forgotten to do up here is go ahead and put in my, my try statement. And I'm going to do this right below here. A try method basically catches any mistakes that you may have. And I'm going to highlight this right here. And then I'm just going to drag it right into here. And then under here, I'm going to go ahead and shoot a um, MSG box. And inside of it, I'm going to tell it um, ex dot two string. And what that's going to do is if there's a system error, it's going to have a little message box pop up and it's going to show me what that is. Um, and go from there. And we have what do we have left? Okay, so now we have the folder browse. Let me check my time. Okay, so we're going to go in here under this folder browse, double click on this, and I'm going to go ahead and slap this code in here. You don't have to have a, uh, under the toolbox, you don't have to go in and tell it to have an open file dialog because we're actually calling one ourselves, um, which is pretty efficient. So now that we have all this code in here, I know I moved really fast through this, but you guys will be able to see it all. Um, and I'll leave a link to my GitHub repository where it has the code to this and the um, zip file if you want to download it. But I'm going to go ahead and start this up now. And we have this little box right here. And... If I go to my desktop, you guys can see these two files. Like if I open up this, you can see it's that. If I open up my reflection thing I did for sociology, um, you can see that it has files there. So I'm going to go to browse and I'm just going to go to desktop and I'm going to target that Microsoft file. And go ahead and hit open and then hit encrypt. And as you can see, this is completely encrypted now. <laughs> as, as you can see, that's what it looks like. So to make a fix again, we're going to hit browse again. We're going to go back and we're going to locate that file. We're going to click on it, hit open, and hit decrypt. As you can see, it turns back and it's readable again. And that is how you do 256-bit encryption the right way. Thank you for joining, and I hope this was helpful. Um, if you guys ever have any questions or you run into problems with encryption and decryption, let me know. Um, AES is the standard use for um, encryption now. Raindall was the first. It was the precursor to this, which is why my original pro program, if I, uh, if I close this out and I go to Visual Studios and I open up ResNock, the precursor, you can see that it's called Raindall, which is why I called it the precursor. Raindall is just as effective as uh, AES. I, I don't care what anybody says. You're not cracking it, that's for sure. Um, D, DES can be, the DES can be cracked. Um, at, someone did it for $250,000 actually, uh, with, worth of computers. So it can be done with that, but Raindall, not so much.